Previously, on the top five best and worst animated films of the year, I think it's time to have a completely fresh start in 2020 and be ready for some new and more original animated features. So before we go, let's take a look at these films and see if we'll be starting 2020 on the right foot. Let's see here, um... Don't know if I want this, Pixar. Looks great, but the movie might not be. Please let this be the comeback of Hanna-Barbera it deserves. As a SpongeBob fan, looks like it can be fun. I know I want this, Pixar! Fine, you can have one more movie, but make it worth it. I don't watch the show, but I am curious about this. Sounds lame, but I could be wrong. This is gonna be epic! I can feel it! And are you sure people still want this after all these years? Because I... don't, to be honest. See you later, dudes! <laughs> and that turned out to be the most outdated thing I've ever put on a video. Boy, was I naive back then. Little did I know that 2020 would become one of, if not possibly, the most chaotic year of our lives. Seriously, all in one year, We've had massive wildfires, giant killer bees, the police unleashing their white supremacy onto the people they're supposed to protect, the public obsess over a lunatic on Netflix, and worst of all, a deadly pandemic that conquered the world and put many people's lives to an immediate halt that is mainly fueled by incompetent Republican politicians and psychotic conspiracy theorists that would rather die than put a piece of cloth on their face. You can see why a lot of people hate this year. But, on the other hand... And now that one of the worst things that ever happened to the country is finally disposed of, the real Americans can wake up the others from their delusional deplorable state so that they could reel America back from going too far right and finally put the effort to criminalize far-right terrorism, white supremacy, and hate speech so that the U.S. can become a completely anti-fascist country. So, 2020 can't be all that bad, right? But anyways, in terms of movies, the year was the most damaging to the film industry, especially when most cinemas closed down and movies had to either migrate to next year or skip the theaters entirely to go directly at home on digital or on streaming services. So it's safe to say that it was a very tough year for the industry with very few features worth mentioning, and that includes animation. And yet, I still have enough to make a list like this. Just like 2020 itself, this list will be a little more different than previous years. Not only will I be including the animated films that came out in theaters and the ones that were planned to and then went to digital, but I'm also including some of the more notable ones that appeared in streaming services like Netflix. I think it's time for even me to recognize that they are also a major competitor worth looking into and analyze. I'm Animat, and these are the top 5 best and worst animated films of 2020. You revel in the glory of my beauty Ready to watch me be legendary Whoa, oh, oh, welcome to Mary. Number 5 before I begin with the worst of the year, I just want to put out a big disclaimer that none of the movies I'll be listing here are technically bad. On average, these movies are in the category of decent at best and mediocre at worst. So if I put any features that are more notable for you among the worst, I'm not saying that they are bad. It's just that there have been better ones than these during 2020. So with that out of the way, let's start this off with The Crudes A New Age. It had been a long time since people last saw the latest modern Stone Age family. In a way, calling the sequel A New Age does make sense, because it does feel like the first film came out at a completely different age. So after almost eight years and scrapping the original concept to rebuild it from the ground up due to the studio's acquisition by Comcast, The Crudes finally return mostly the same and carrying some of the issues from before. It can be fun at times, sure, but it could still be wearying to watch with a plot that is a bit of the same as the first and still as unenthusiastically predictable as it can be, characters that have gotten a downgrade and even reduced to the point of being just a one-note running gag, 
And the crowd still had that lack of subtlety that makes it feel like it's harshly hammering its message onto the audience and even causes the humor to feel more annoying by how loud and obnoxious it can be. In a sense, watching the film can feel like being in the middle of a family reunion where all the relatives do is angrily yell at each other across the table. However, even with all that, the film does also carry some strengths to help somewhat redeem itself from its problems. Just like with the first, the sequel is an amazingly crafted piece of eye candy, filled with vibrant colors, immersive worlds, creative designs, and fun-filled moments that give the feature at least one reason that makes it worth watching. That, and it does get progressively better as the movie goes on, resulting in an exciting and intense finale that kinda does save the movie where it did prove that it is possible to have fun with it. Yes, there are some things that the movie does right, especially with the animation and its ending, but in its entirety, the crudes are still as primitive as they were all those years ago. We happy meet you. Thanks. Oh. Ready to watch me be legendary. Number four. The SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. I know that technically the Americans would be getting it by early 2021, so for them, it isn't actually a 2020 movie. However, since the film did get released on the big screen during the summer in Canada, and that was the only time that I ever went to the theaters during the pandemic, I might as well include it on this list here. And I could say that I was among the first to discover that people weren't really missing much with this one. Yes, the movies have usually been a highlight in SpongeBob's history, like with the 2004 film and Sponge Out of Water in 2015. Sponge on the Run, however, feels more like your typical episode from the series just extended to 90 minutes. Yes, there are certain advancements it does to make this a bigger deal, like with the unique and enjoyable CG animation and adding in some live action elements that do give a bit more charm to the picture, like the great performances from Keanu Reeves and Danny Trejo. But even with those, they don't do a whole lot to make this film stand out from all the other little adventures SpongeBob and Patrick had on television and gives little reason to why this plotline deserves its own feature. Not to mention that its intentions don't feel as genuine as its predecessors, since there are times where it can feel less like a legitimate Spongebob movie and more like a promotional tool to advertise the spin-off series Camp Coral. But this is not to say that it's bad. Like I said, this does feel like a regular Spongebob episode and on its own, it's fine. It could be fun, it could get some laughs. It's just disappointing and not as engaging when compared to the previous two films and how it's subpar when Spongebob built a pretty solid standard for his movies. Spongebob may have lost Gary, again, but the movie lost so much more that would have made itself as good as his predecessors. Oh, I love your sense of irony, Patrick. Thank you. <laughs> I love my sense of ironing, too. Ready to watch me be Number 3. Worst. Trolls World Tour. Who would have thought that out of all the movies during the pandemic, this is the one that will be noted as the picture that changed film history forever. The movie that broke the rules and enraged movie theaters to ultimately set a brand new standard in film distribution, to which many other studios would later follow suit. And all that madness in the industry was because of a bunch of literal trolls. And not even good trolls at that. Sure, it has more historical impact than any other feature on this list, but I can't say the same regarding the amount of substance it delivers. As a feature on its own, Trolls World Tour is a very bland kids flick. It just has very little to offer to make those 90 minutes worth it because of its dreadfully dull and easily predictable story and a cast of characters that value quantity over quality, leaving the audience stuck on a quickly forgettable journey with these characters that are either generic tropes, dumb as a post, or just there to say that they exist. But on the other hand, I will give it to the film that this one is a minor improvement to the original 2016 film. If there is one good thing going for it, it's that this does have some of the best animation of the year. 
Seriously, the animators at DreamWorks took the visuals to a whole new level with the colors, the textures, the choreography, and the designs in order to create this world based on a variety of music genres, which is honestly a great concept with so many creative possibilities. Too bad it was unfortunately wasted on this film, though. I'm sure that for many years to come, people will remember Trolls World Tour as the film that marked a new chapter in cinema. I don't think I could say the same about it as an animated feature in itself. This is gonna take a lot of hugs. Ready to watch me be Number 2. Animal Crackers. Okay, before I talk about this film, I just want to applaud the filmmakers for finally getting this movie released after it had its premiere at the Annecy International Animation Film Festival in 2017. They've been getting a long line of bad luck for years to find a distributor, but managed to put it out to the public thanks to the help of Netflix. With that said, and now that we can finally see what this little passion project is all about, these animal crackers turn out to be really stale. Don't get me wrong, I get where this concept is going of a circus that has these magical crackers that can turn people into a variety of animals. It has potential, and the movie does benefit it to exercise its creativity and have some scenes that can be fun. But outside of that, this really is just a generic animated kids flick with very little substance to remember it by. The story is formulaically dull, the animation makes it obvious that it has a severely low budget, and the majority of the characters have to rely on the novelty of the actors they're playing like Danny DeVito, Patrick Warburton, Wallace Shawn, Gilbert Gottfried, and more. Sure, it's not the worst animated film out there, but the biggest issue with it is that it's boring. Not to mention that it kind of feels outdated because this is about a circus that relies on animal acts to run its show with people demanding for the animals to perform. I don't know about you, but I don't think there are many people nowadays who are cool with that idea. Again, I know it took them a long time to put it out there after they finished the film, and I'm glad for them that they finally did so. It's just that, as a viewer, I wouldn't necessarily put this in the category of worth the wait. Look at him go. How is it that he gets paid Look more than me? I don't know, honey. And the number one worst animated film of 2020 is... Scoob. I'm not gonna lie. This was one of the movies in 2020 I was highly anticipated for. Not only would this be the mainstream comeback of Scooby-Doo, but it would also be the start of an entire Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. The promise of taking these legendary cartoon characters and reviving them in a way that would put them back in their prime just like how they once were on television. And what did we get instead? A tiresome feature whose quality is debatably no different than any of Scooby's recent direct-to-home media films. Sure, it does have some fantastic animation that adapts the classic television style onto CGI, and it can be fun to look out for all those easter eggs to other Hanna-Barbera properties, but it doesn't change how terribly weak the execution turned out to be. All that animation and little cameos can't do much to fix the writing that provided an uninspiring story that tests the friendship of Shaggy and Scooby in a predictable way, characters that are possibly some of the most forgettable versions of themselves, and comedy that has less of the good ones from the animators and more of the horrible ones from the screenwriters. But all this might not have been that big of an issue. In fact, it would probably put it in the same standards as the other films on this worst list. What makes this the number one worst is the tone that tries something that I thought these studios gave up doing years ago. To be modern and trendy for the younger crowd. This is the kind of film that is filled with tedious pop culture references, random use of modern and out of place songs to fill in as the soundtrack, and the controversial choice of replacing most of the veteran voice actors with recognizable celebrities that barely even sound like those characters in the first place. It results in the film to have all of its genuine sense as a movie to be completely replaced with obvious corporately manufactured intentions, feeling like it doesn't want to tell a new major story with Scooby and the gang, but rather just wants to sell a product to the public. Out of all the films in the year, this is the one that had the most potential and the most concepts that could be turned into something great, but all were entirely wasted on an easily forgettable and mediocre kids flick. 
And that's exactly why Scoob is the worst animated film of 2020. Now, before we get into those rare occurrences that are actually good in 2020, I'd like to have an honorable mention. Over the Moon. Out of all the animated films this year, this is honestly the most polarizing. At least in terms of how I feel about this, because there are some things here that are amazingly good, and others that nearly ruin the whole film. On one hand, this has possibly some of the best animation you could ever find on Netflix. Beautifully designed, bursting with creativity, strong use of Chinese mythology, vibrantly colorful, and highly detailed to make the environments largely immersive. That, and it does have a powerful message about moving on after a loved one dies, allowing the movie to have its heart and soul to connect with audiences with a subject that can be personal for many. And I'm sure it's something that even the filmmakers had to go through with the passing of the film's writer, Audrey Wells. Then again, as great as those elements can be, it could have been among the best if it weren't for those detestable characters. I mean, I can get what they're going through, and some are written pretty well. It's just that they can be categorized as either despicably bitter or downright annoying with their failed comedy. They ultimately give the feature this mean-spirited tone that it makes it hard to go through this journey when there's nobody to really like while on the moon. And since this is also a musical, the songs themselves are, well, decent. Not so bad as it does try to have that Disney-style grandiose to it, but nothing that can pack a punch as what it wants to be, and the most memorable thing about them anyways is the animation that accompanies the musical numbers. It could be a massive mixed bag, but for what it did right, it did it wonderfully, and does have some reasons for viewers to go on a rocket to the moon. It's real, right, Papa? Uh... Number 5! Onward! Let's be honest, this is not Pixar's best film. This is one of those times where one of their movies had the quality go down a bit from amazingly great to just good. Then again, just good is still good, and they still made something enjoyable with this one. While the concept is rather weak with the whole idea of modernizing medieval fantasy and have the characters go on a typical mystical quest like some Dungeons & Dragons adventure, its execution does try to make the most with its ideas and turn them into a fun-filled feature. It's more of the generic and forgettable side on the things they have established, yes, but the story is still engaging and filled with action-packed moments with magic that take their effects to the next level, and actors who lend their voices to give some great performances that make the characters enjoyable to tag along with. But even if it doesn't have the same standards as a Pixar film, it certainly has the heart of one. Director Dan Scanlon stated that this story was inspired by his own father who died when he was little and the relationship with his brother when growing up. And it really shows that he and his team turned that personal experience into a heartfelt journey that can shed a tear at certain moments. And it's from those personal intentions to share the feelings of connecting with a lost loved one that makes this film worthwhile. Again, it's far from Pixar's best and certainly not the most original idea they came up with, but it's certainly one of their most touching features that made the quest worth exploring for. I'm giving you to the count of three. Uh, okay. Wait, what are you doing? I don't know. Ah, Ready to watch me be Number four. The Willoughbys. One of the most common source materials to turn into an animated film is children's books, and they can come with varying results. Sometimes they can be great, and sometimes they are... definitely not. However, among all those movies, there are very few that can actually feel like a living children's book, and The Willoughby's is a prime example of that. Despite being based on one of the works of Lois Lowry, this feels like it came out of the imagination of Roald Dahl with douchey parental figures, kids going to grand places, and a loving message of family all presented with a surprisingly engaging story that's not afraid to go wild with its tone, 
going from colorfully silly to shockingly dark. But like the family itself, the movie is not necessarily picture perfect. Obviously, this is a very stylized film, but it's one of those style over substance pictures, feeling like the priority is to give the animation a unique look more than to tell the story of a bunch of kids trying to get rid of their parents. Not saying that it looks bad, the animation is definitely creative and it can fit the tone to deliver some fun moments and some funny gags. But at the same time, it wants to try so much with its animation that it can often feel like it's trying to bite off more than it could chew and result in the movie to often become uncomfortably and unnecessarily over the top. Not to mention Ricky Gervais randomly popping in with his out of place snarky narrations that can break the mood. But just like the family, it can have its quirks and frustrating problems, but they could still be lovable regardless. Ghastly. Ruthless. <laughs> Number 3 A Shaun the Sheep Movie, Farmageddon Back in 2015, Shaun the Sheep made his feature debut to prove how simplicity can be both charming and very entertaining in order to deliver what could possibly be the cutest animated film in years. And then when Sean later returned with an intergalactic surprise, his latest adventure turned out to be the funniest animated film of the year. Or technically last year for the people in the UK. Anyways, Farmageddon adds a little sci-fi twist to the Sean the Sheep formula. It is still a simple story about some sheep causing mischief in the farm dealing with a stuck-up dog and a not-so-bright farmer, but now has a little alien that's making the town go UFO crazy that just wants to find her way back home, and it's up to Sean to help her out without getting caught by the Ministry of Alien Detection. Like I said before, just like its predecessor, the sequel really takes advantage of its simplicity, relying on just the handful of characters and areas they have in order to give more focus on the creative visual gags to give the audience a good laugh again and again from the great stop motion animation, and the charm to deliver some heartfelt moments and to make the cast endearing and make them likable to root for them as they bring the little alien back to her home planet. Also, as it is an alien movie, it doesn't shy away from making so many different references and jokes to the highlights of sci-fi. And yes, while pop culture references can be cringy at times, this movie does have the talent to make those gags enjoyable, as it both satirizes and pays homage to what people love about the genre. Sure, on the outside, it does look like a simple little kitty flick, but never underestimate the charm of Sean, because now he can prove that his clever wit and caring heart can resonate across galaxies. Number 2 Wolf Walkers. Once again, Cartoon Saloon returned to turning Celtic mythology into living art that tells an inspiring and beautiful story. While it does follow the same footsteps as The Secret of Kells and Song of the Sea and features a similar formula as those two, it still manages to deliver its own voice to make it different enough to deliver a unique experience that cannot be found in any other piece of animation. The visuals deliver a beautiful blend of designs that feature abstract animation and old Irish medieval art with a hint of the woodblock print style, capable of capturing a look that embraces symmetry and geometry and gives a new meaning to 2D animation that can make the most out of filling the space in all the right ways. Like I said before, it can really feel like art coming to life. But animation alone is not what makes Wolfwalkers a newfound animated treasure. The movie also features an unforgettable story of the bond between two young girls named Robin and Maeve, where human colonization threatens the wolves' home and the girls do what they can to save themselves and find Maeve's mom. As the animation may be dazzling at first, that's when the story comes with an unexpected emotional punch to turn the movie into a highly engaging, intense, and tear-jerking journey of a couple of girls and a pack of wolves taking on an entire kingdom. As it is from an Irish studio like Cartoon Saloon, some can say that it technically counts as an independent feature, even if it was released on a prominent streaming service like Apple TV+. 
And while it can be true, since it has plenty of those indie traits, that's exactly what makes this so good. It didn't have to follow any of the mainstream rules and focus on just making its own art to tell its own story. There have been very few movies that could accomplish what Wolfwalkers did, and it made audiences never forget when they went out to go running with the wolves. Robin, something's happened to me. Yeah, I can see that. It's flipping great. <laughs> And the number one best animated film of 2020 is... Soul. I'm sure some are probably rolling their eyes because I put a mainstream film at the top over an independent one, shafting the little man so I could give the highest praise to the most popular boys in the industry. I just want to state right now that choosing the number one best of this year was the hardest decision to do for this list. Both Soul and Wolfwalkers are near-perfect features in their own right, and I adore them equally. But in order to choose which one would get the gold, it really went down to the finest detail to determine which film did it better. And ultimately, Joe's jazzy picture came out on top by being not just the smartest and most thought-provoking animated film of the year, but also possibly of the entire Pixar collection. There was already great intrigue for its prominently black cast and having Pete Docter directing the film, but what lies within Soul is a complex discussion about life itself. What it means to live, what's the point of being alive, and what role does passion and dreams play in your life? It's a philosophical piece that is almost unheard of in an animated film, to which it approaches the subject in an uplifting and inspiring way. And that's just regarding the movie's message. Even when seeing the film on its own, it is still beautifully built that is another shining example of Pixar's top reputation with a well-built and engaging story, great believable characters that could provide some fun comedy and help present the message about life in a way that fits the narrative, a strong theme of jazz that gives the movie its own identity, an amazing animation that takes two different styles that look revolutionary on their own like the realistic New York City and the experimentally abstract astronaut planes and connect them together to make them feel like they can fit in this one picture. Sometimes it's expected that Pixar would turn out an amazingly crafted film, but even this has managed to surpass its own standards, which is why many are even going as far and say that it's one of the best from the studio, and I can understandably see why. This isn't just a movie that can entertain, it can make you think, it can inspire, and it can give you a new point of view on life. And for achieving what can be considered almost unheard of for a movie like this, it is exactly why Soul is the number one best animated film of 2020. Everybody knows that it's all right. And that's all I've got for the top five best and worst animated films of 2020. Considering that many state that 2020 is one of the worst years ever, we only got nowhere to go but up for 2021 and let's hope it can reflect on the year's animated films as well. Also, with the way the pandemic really messed things up with the schedule, don't expect what I'm about to list here to be set in stone. You never know what changes can happen, even in 2021. Anyways, let's see what we might get here. This could be fun, if they ever have a plan to release it. I was hyped when this was scheduled for 2020, and I'm still hyped now. This is gonna suck. I don't know about the show, but I know the 2002 movie. Does that count? Give me more Lin-Manuel Miranda music! Oh, this is gonna make me cry, will it? I guess, but I'm just hoping this doesn't get franchise fatigue. Oh boy, we're really doing this, are we? Oh no, not again. Oh no, not again! Oh no, not again! Give me more Lin-Manuel Miranda music! And finally... Oh no! Actually, I kind of like the first, so maybe this will be harmless. See you later, dudes! Oh, and until you get your vaccine and we got the okay from medical experts, wear a mask. <laughs> The cat.
counts off. Huh. 